Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you all tonight. I'm so delighted to once again have a privilege, uh, opportunity to be able to come into your homes, wherever you might be, to just speak a word from the Lord on tonight. I'm just grateful to God for his faithfulness unto us and for all that he is, that has done and what he's still yet doing and what has yet to come to pass in our life. I still have a great expectation for God to move supernaturally in my life, and I pray that you have that same expectation on tonight. Uh, but before we get into uh, the word of God on tonight, I wanted to just let everybody know that we are here at Arrows of Deliverance and Faith. We're praying for you. We're praying for especially for those who have been infected by COVID-19. Many of people that I've talked to, uh, they have uh, relatives or friends that have been stricken with this dreadful pandemic disease. And I myself have had uh, people in my own family, I got a call today. Uh, from someone who is very near and dear to my heart who said that she's been stricken with COVID and we just want to just reach out and go before the Lord in prayer and we want you to know that here at Hours of Deliverance and Faith uh, whatever your situation is tonight we want you to know that we're praying for you and we believe that God is still yet going to have his way in the whirlwinds of the of whirlwinds that are blowing in your life and so we go before God tonight Father in Jesus name we thank you we bless you we honor you we glorify you on tonight. We're so grateful that we have you, Lord God, as the one who neither sleeps nor slumbers. Lord God, you are the one who keepeth Israel. Lord God, you are the balm in Gilead, and you are the great physician. You are the great I am. You are the first and the last and everything in between on tonight. And you are the one who said there is nothing too hard for you. God, you are the God of all flesh. And I pray right now, Lord God, for all those that have been stricken with this dreadful pandemic, this COVID-19, those who even have lost loved ones, Lord God, who, those who have lost friends and family members, Lord God, because of it. I pray, God, that you would comfort them even right now, you being the God of all comfort and consolation. Touch, Lord God, my brothers and my sisters on tonight. I pray, God, that you would touch my aunt right now, right where she is, and that you would heal by your spirit and by yes. your power. God, on tonight, we bind, Lord God, pestilence. We bind all manner of the sickness and disease. We bind, Lord God, the spirit of infirmity on tonight, and we lose, speak, decree, and declare healing, yes. Lord God, upon your people. We lose, speak, decree, and clear, declare healing, yes. Lord God, upon your people. We pray, God, that you would heal our land. We pray, God, that you would hold us up and that you would help us, Lord God. And we're thankful, Lord God, for your grace, because we know that we're yet standing just because of your grace, Lord God. We're standing, Lord God, here healthy because of your grace. We have roofs over our heads because of your grace. God, we are able to do what it is we're doing because of your grace. And it was unmerited, God, but because your love, Lord God, we are so grateful on tonight that you're yet keeping us. Yes, and Lord God, we pray these prayers and these supplications tonight in the name of Jesus. Jesus and we name. pray that you will be glorified yes. and that you will speak, Lord God, and that your word will now begin to go out and begin to transcend, Lord God, the depressed to a place of praise and adoration unto you. We believe by faith, oh God, that it's done on tonight. And it's in Jesus' name. If you believe it, won't you say in Jesus' name? In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Once again, I'm Pastor Scotty Miller Sr., and I'm the pastor here at Arrows of Deliverance and Faith Ministries. And we invite you to come so that you can find strength for your journey. This is a place where we have open arms for those that who want to join this ministry, for those who want to reach out to us, who just need some help in their time of need. We want you to know that we are here for you. Amen. And so without further ado, I want to get into the lesson on tonight. And I believe that it's an applicable lesson tonight if we would just hear what the Spirit is saying unto us. And so not too long ago, we spoke uh, we started rather a series and we entitled it the objective of affliction And so as I was thinking about this message Have you ever looked into the Word of God and we know this very familiar passage of Scripture where the great Apostle Paul? He had a thorn in the flesh that the scripture tells us about and the Bible says that he went before God And he begged God he asked God Lord remove this thorn from me because he felt that it would hinder his ministry. He felt that he could not be adequate enough to fulfill the mandate on his life or that it was some sort of hindrance. The Bible never told us what the infirmity was. He never told us what the thorn was, but we do know that it bothered him so much that he bombarded God. And what is intriguing about the text and why I'm starting out this way on tonight is what was it that stopped him 
in one instance, he's asking God to remove something from him. And in the next instance, he goes into a spirit of praise and adoration. The depression leaves and he begins to give God glory and then says what he's going to give God glory in. Well, for those who know the text, it, it was very easy because God gave him a word. How many know that in this season we need a word from on high? Mm -hmm. And so God spoke from his glorious throne and said, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to know on tonight, that was the very thing that shifted Paul from a place of depression to a place of praise and adoration unto God. And I believe that God is going to shift some of us on tonight from that same place that if we be honest tonight, we will admit that this is where we are. And so we want you to really, really hear what the Spirit of God is saying on tonight because I believe God wants to be, bring about deliverance in the lives of his people. And so we're in our second installment tonight. Again, we're talking about the objective of affliction. And so I want to ask you tonight whether you know, in other words, that the adversity in your life is serving a purpose in your life. I'm going to ask you again, do we really fully understand that the adversity, the trials, the tribulations, the pain, the strain, the struggle, the economic downfall, whatever it is that's in our world or in our personal circumference, in our personal life, do we have a greater understanding that it is indeed serving a purpose in our life? Yeah. In Ecclesiastes chapter number 7 and verse 14, Solomon said that in the day of prosperity, I need you to get this tonight. Mm -hmm. He said in the day of prosperity, he told us to be joyful. Mm -hmm. Then he said in the day of adversity, consider that God has made the one as well as the other. Mm -hmm. So that man may, may not find out anything that will be after him. And see, most people, my brothers and my sisters, take for granted when things are going well, not realizing that God is the one who sends rain on the just or the, the justified as well as the unjust or rather the unsaved. And it is God who makes his son to rise on both the evil and the good. As scripture tells us mm -hmm. in Matthew's gospel, chapter number five and verse 45. And so we must trust God that he allows one as well as the other. It wasn't Frankie and Beverly that just told us that it was joy and pain. God was the first one that told us that he allows one as well as the other, remembering that it's always for our benefit in the end. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter number 8 and 28, very familiar passages of scripture, encourages us tonight to know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose, according to his purpose. We yes. must understand that the afflictions in our life come to serve his purpose in our life. Why? So that we might learn to trust God in both the good as well as the bad times. That's right. Amen. I suggest to you tonight, my brothers and my sisters, that everything that we go through has an objective. And we know this because the Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter number three and verse one, the scripture says that to everything, 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 everything. there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. And I want you to understand tonight that that word purpose in this text in the Hebrew is the word shefetz. And shefetz means delight. Watch this. It means something that is acceptable. It means that it's a valuable thing. And what we have to do tonight is realize that within the purpose of God, we will always find affliction for purpose to manifest and be birthed in the earth realm. Whenever we think about the purpose of God, we must understand that there will be some trying times. There will be some suffering. There will be some pain. There will be something that we must go through in order for God's purpose to be manifest and birthed in the earth realm. Mm -hmm. God tells us in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 48 and verse 10, he said, behold, in other words, it means look, I have refined you. God says, I need you to look. I have refined you, but not with silver. I have chosen thee, God says, in the furnace of, what's that word? Affliction. And so then the objective of our affliction, or rather to our affliction, is designed to purify us mm -hmm. and mature us. There's no more fluff if we think about it. There's no more doing things that we used to do when we were able to attend our big churches. And how many of us realize tonight that this pandemic, for many of us, has caused us to grow up? Mm -hmm. 
Many of us, it has caused us to seek the Lord in the scripture for ourselves. We don't have the, the comfort of the scriptures and the loving uh, embraces of the saints like we used to have. We don't focus on what the edifices look like on the inside or what the outside. We're not focusing on what people drove up in or the suits they had on, the jewelry they were wearing. This pandemic has allowed us to all have the same perspective. And what it is doing, preferably, is causing us to understand God on a greater way so that we can mature into the things of God. And so I'm suggesting to you tonight, in other words, that could it be that God has allowed this pandemic to cause us all to begin to seek him? We know what First Chronicles says. It says, is that if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves, seek my face, pray and turn from their wicked ways, then the, God, the Bible says that we would he hear from God and he would heal mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. land. And so yes. I want to say it again, this pandemic for many of us has caused us to grow up in God and seek him for our ourselves. But I also want to suggest to you tonight that the affliction of this pandemic is showing us who the church really is. I want you to think about the affliction and the horrible suffering that the Lord Jesus went through in the Bible. The Bible said in 1 Timothy chapter number 2 and verse 6. In other words, before he got to the place where we know he suffered the worst death in the annals of history, the Bible says many turned away and walked away from God. Mm -hmm. But in 1 Timothy chapter number 2 verses 5 and 6, the scripture says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, that man... Jesus Christ, who gave himself, watch this, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. In other words, Jesus suffered to loose you and I from the bondage and the penalty of sin. And so even as we said, there's no more fluff. There is no more uh, attention on the things that we used to find so much or place much credulity in, now we have to begin to look at why we are even able to say that we are saved on tonight. Mm -hmm. It was because of the affliction that the Lord Jesus yes, suffered. God. It was because of the pain that he went through on the cross of Calvary. It was because of how they hung him high on that rugged cross on the, on the hill of Golgotha. How they put those crowns of thorns on his head. Yes. How they beat him with the canine tails. For all night long and how the cat and I tails, they ripped into his skin and pulled his skin off of his back. It was because of the affliction of them pounding those nine inch nails into his corpus tunnel, into his arms and into his feet, hanging him up and dropping him into a hole. It was because of that affliction and that you and I are able to speak, say that we are saved on tonight. It was because Hallelujah. of the affliction that he went through that he said, I am going to lay down my life, but I'm going to also pick it back up. And because he rose, you and I can now say whatever seems to be dead and dormant and melancholy and, and gone in our life, we must have the same faith to know that because of his suffering, mm -hmm. it is why we can now have a greater hope. My God. The Bible said in Isaiah chapter number 53 and 10 that it pleased the Lord. This is what I need you to get. After we think about all he went through, mm -hmm. Scripture tells us that it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Mm. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering, an offering, an offering. I told you we're talking about how our afflictions have an objective. He was an offering for sin. He said, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Another translation said that it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. My God. Mm -hmm. And so then, an objective tonight points to a strategic position that is to be attained and a purpose that is to be achieved by a strategic operation that will only come to pass by the plan and the hand of God. God said in Isaiah chapter number 46, verses 9 and 10, he said, Not to remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. He said, I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel yes. shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Could it be that when we suffer and we go through the things, even as Scripture tells us that when Jesus was being bruised and beaten, it was a melody in the ears of God. If you look at it in the original Greek language of the text, could it be that the afflictions we're going through are a sweet-smelling Savior in the sight of God and in the ears and in the nostrils of our Lord? Mm -hmm. 
And so, my brothers and my sisters, tonight I'm talking about how our afflictions have an objective to position you and I to where God wants us to be. Mm -hmm. John Calvin said that the fire of affliction reveals the quality of our faith. Proverbs 24 and 10 says it this way. He said that if we faint in the day of adversity, he said that our strength is small. And so when it comes to the quality of our faith, do we buckle under pressure? What is the, the mentality of our mindset? What is the disposition of our mindset when we find ourselves in adverse situations? Mm. When we find we, we don't have the money to pay the bills or when we have uh, sickness may be in our body or we're having marital issues or our children are uh, running wayward. What is our disposition and our mindset, especially in these calamitous and tr uh, trying times that we are living in? Do we arise to the occasion and so forth our uh, trust in the Lord and our hope in God, knowing that he's still yet in control? Do we still have a mindset to do as David said, uh, I will praise him at all times? At all times. Or because of what is what's going on in our world and what we're suffering, we don't have a praise. We don't have a prayer life. We don't have a mind to study the word of God or spend time with the Lord. Well, if that be the case, the quality of our faith needs to come up. So what Solomon was saying and what his point was in this text, and that's Proverbs 24 and 10, his point is not that we are weak because that's obvious, mm -hmm. as we are all made of dust. Frail and we're feeble as Psalms 103 tells us, but rather what he was saying is that if we faint on the days where adversity overwhelms us, mm -hmm. our strength is small because we are not trusting in God who says that we can do all things only through him who will strengthen us. And so if we lack trust tonight, I don't know who I'm preaching to, it is because we are relying on ourselves and consequently our causing us to faint. Brothers and sisters, our circumstances tonight are not an emergency. I don't know how you feel tonight. You might feel like you need God to show up right now, and he's going to show up. But I want you to know that our circumstances are oftentimes an emergence. Our situations are not an emergency, but they are an emergence. Our afflictions are usually the unfolding of something we do not, we don't see and do not see down the road. And it's the very thing that pushes you and I into the next level to what God has predestined for our life. I want you to be encouraged on tonight because our circumstances are the unfolding debut of a new beginning in our lives. If we will but hold on to our faith in God, we preached about this on Sunday and we told you that God is bringing about a new beginning. And oftentimes what God has to do is what he did in the days of Noah before the covenant that he instituted with Noah and the rest of mankind. And what he had to do was destroy the old and to bring about the new. And so some of the things that we have lost and the things that we are suffering even right now is because God has to bring an end to those things mm -hmm. so that the new beginning can take place. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians chapter number 3 and verse 9 says that we are laborers together with God. And so what does that mean to us on tonight? What that means is that we have a responsibility as the children of God to fight the good fight of faith as we transition to the place of that new beginning. We have to fight and contend against those things that are coming against us that's really trying to try our faith. We have to know that the sufferings of this world are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is yet to be revealed in, not around us, but in us. 1 Timothy 6 and 12 encourages us to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. And the word, watch this, fight in this text in the Greek means to struggle and to contend with an adversary. It's, it's, it's the enemy in me. That's in essence what this text speaks out to me because I have found out that my struggles is not with those or the situations of my life. My struggle is within my own mind and how I perceive and process the fight that I'm in. We all know that we're living in trying times, and we all know that this is a time of tremendous struggle and strain, and we all know that we are indeed living in the last days that the Apostle Paul described in his second letter to Timothy in chapter number 3 and verse 1, where he said, this no, not guess, which this is not a guessing game. He said that we ought to know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. And it's important, my sisters and my brothers, on tonight for us to understand that the word perilous in this text comes from the Greek word kalepos. And it means the reducing of strength due to difficult and dangerous and 
furious times. And we're living in a time where many are struggling in their faith to be yet believe and hold on to what God promised them. Why? Because of the afflictions, because of the pain, because of the adversity and the trials that we are faced with. And the Bible lets us know that we are not of them that turn back. But there are saints tonight that are turning back to the plow because of the sufferings of life. And I want you to consider with me tonight the heroes of faith in Hebrews chapter number 11. The Bible lets us know that they had tremendous adversity because of their faith in the Lord, because of who they believed in. The Bible says that they were sawn asunder. They were burned at the stake. They were thrown to lions. They were stoned to death because of what they believed in. And in verse 13 of Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible said that they all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. That's the faith that they had. They seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on earth. Do you realize tonight that this is not our home? In spite of what they had to go through, they did not denounce their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And they didn't turn their back on God, but they were resolved and fortified in who they believed in. My brothers and my sisters, the Bible lets us know that even though we are in this world, we are not of this world. We have to hold on to God and not allow these afflictions to cause the objective that God allowed them to come in the first place to hinder us from walking into the purpose to which God has already predestined for us before the foundation of the world. That's and right. so tonight, my objective is that you will be solidified in your faith. Yeah. My prayer tonight is that you will be strengthened and fortified in the Lord and what he has revealed to you about your life. Mm. I want you to know tonight that God has a strategic, a strategic plan to fulfill his purpose for you and your future tonight. Max Lucado once said that jubilation over liberation soon becomes frustration because of dehydration. Mm. And so in other words, tonight we're seeing how our affliction often dehydrates our praise and dehydrates our prayer life and dehydrates our devotional time and how it dehydrates our peace and our joy because it seems that if it's not one thing, how many of us have said this, It's not, if it's not this, if it's not that. If it's not this struggle, it's a struggle on this side. And it seems like it will never end. Well, one of the objectives of affliction is to watch this exhibit the power of God. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that again. One of the objectives of our affliction is to exhibit the power of God. Mm -hmm. Psalms 34, verses 18 and 19, the scripture says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Mm -hmm. Then he says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, mm -hmm. but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Not some of them, but out of all of them. The Amplifier says it this way, many hardships and perplexing circumstances confront the righteous, but the Lord rescues him from them all. And so then God exhibits his power in delivering us out of our dilemmas and the perplexing circumstances in our life. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 through 11 says, but we have this treasure. How many know that we even though we are in this earth and clay and in the body of this death, we still have a treasure in earth and vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Scripture says we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Did you hear the objective? I'm going to say it again. We are always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. Why? That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Mm -hmm. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So life also, so excuse me, then death worketh in us but life in you. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, this pandemic is showing us who's made of gold, who's made of stubble, and who's made of wood. Mm. I want you to know tonight that John tells us in chapter number 16 and verse 33, he said that these things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. Jesus said, in this world, when ye sh we shall have tribulation, but then he says, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He didn't say be of good cheer when things are going the way we want them to go. He didn't say just be of good cheer when we're on the mountaintop, when our bills are paid, when our bank accounts are fat and everything is, is, 
uh, seems to be rosy. No, he said be of good cheer because we're going to have tribulation. Mm -hmm. And so then affliction and sufferings are a certainty in the life of the believer and the child of God. But I want you to notice something that we might have overlooked in the scriptures tonight. Philippians chapter number 1 and verse 29 describes suffering as a gift of grace. Mm, that's a Selah moment. I probably missed a lot, lost a whole lot of y'all right there. Philippians 1 and 29 describes suffering as a gift of grace. In 1 Peter chapter number 2, verses 21 and through 23, Peter explains that we as disciples of Christ have been called for this purpose. The Bible says, since Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example for us to follow in his steps. And while being reviled, this is what Jesus did. He did not revile in return. How many of us have wanted to give people a piece of our mind? Mm -mm. He uttered no threats while he was suffering, but kept entrusting himself to him who judges righteously. Why? Because Jesus knew that what he was going through had an objective. John writes in 1 John 3.16 that we know love by this. That's 1 John 3.16. He said that we know love by this. By what? That he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Luke writes in Acts chapter 5 and verse 41 that the apostles went on their way from the presence of the council rejoicing that they had been considered worthy to suffer shame for his name. They beat them like there was no tomorrow, but they didn't buckle under the pressure of those, those afflictions and that adversity. The Bible says they went out rejoicing because they were counted worthy to suffer shame for the name of Jesus. Jesus spoke of Paul in Acts chapter 9 and verse 16 when talking to Ananias. The Lord said, the Lord said that I will show him. He was talking about the great apostle Paul, how much he must suffer for my name's sake. And the Bible clearly tells us in 1 Corinthians 11 and 1, and all believers, and all believers, not some, he says, and all believers are called to be imitators of Paul, mm -hmm. just as he also was of Christ. My God in heaven. Another objective of affliction is to teach us the will of God. In Psalms 119 and 71, and I'm almost done tonight, David said that it was good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might what? Learn thy statutes. That word afflicted there is important because in the Greek, it's the Greek word ana. And ana means to take heed and pay attention. And it means to respond to. And so in other words, the afflictions we go through oftentimes are designed to turn us back to God. Because sometimes we have turned our back on God and don't even realize it. That's so right. God would allow some troublesome times to come to turn us back to him. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Let me prove it to you. In Deuteronomy chapter number 4, verses 30 and 31, the Bible says that when thou art in tribulation mm -hmm. and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days. How many know we are living in the latter days? He said, if thou turn to the Lord thy God and shall be obedient unto his voice, for the Lord thy God is a merciful God, he will not forsake us, neither destroy us, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swear unto them. Now, let me give it to you in the Amplified. The Bible says, when you are in distress and tribulation and all these things come on you in the latter days, you will return to the Lord your God and listen mm -hmm. to his voice. Listen. Good God Almighty. In Daniel chapter number 4, verses 29 through 34. The scripture says at the end of 12 months, Nebuchadnezzar walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of thy kingdom by the might of my power uh -huh. and for the honor of my majesty? Listen to the pride of this man. How many know that it was God that raised him up? Mm -hmm. The Bible said that while the word was still in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. And these shall ye, they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee. He's talking about seven years until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven from men, and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was yet with the dew of heaven till his hairs were grown like the eagles. God caused them to be like a beast out in the field because of his pride. Mm -hmm. But watch this. The next thing that happened, the scripture says that then I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes unto heaven and my understanding returned unto me and I blessed the Most High and I praised and honored him that liveth forever 
whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. How many of us know I told you that affliction would cause us to humble ourselves yes. and return to the God of our salvation? Come on, God. Good God Almighty on tonight. Another objective of affliction I want to give you before we close on tonight is in keeping us from departing from God. Y'all remember Jonah, right? Mm -hmm. Jonah in chapter number 2, verses 7 to 10. Jonah's affliction prompted him to pray to the God. How many know that it is praying time? It's praying time. It caused him to pray to the God who gave him specific instructions. Mm -hmm. And he prayed to the one who he was, in fact, running from. And he said, when my soul fainted within me, what did he do? I remembered the Lord. I told you on Sunday that God remembers us, but we have to also remember God. And he said, my prayer came in unto me, mm -hmm. into thine holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy, but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. He said, I will pay that that I have bowed. Salvation is of the Lord, and the Lord spake unto the fish and vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. We also, we must know tonight that prayer also indeed changes things. Yes, it does. And so my brothers and my sister, Job said it this way in chapter 36 and 15. He delivers the afflicted by their affliction and opens their ear by adversity. My God, did you hear what the word of God says? Mm -hmm. He said he delivers the afflicted by their affliction and opens their ear by their adversity. And so wow. brothers and sisters, if God wants to get our attention then allowing us to be afflicted or by allowing adversity to hit us will open our ears. Yeah. What we have to do is pay attention to it. it. We have to listen to what God is trying to teach us. Romans chapter number 7 and verse 18 tells us, Paul said that I know that nothing good dwells in me, mm. that is in my flesh, for the willing is present in me, but the doing of the good is not. Mm. But it is the Holy Ghost, he said, that enables us, and in short, the helper does more than help us, but enables us. Mm -hmm. The word enables tonight, brothers and sisters, means to provide someone with adequate power, adequate means, adequate opportunity, mm -hmm. and authority to do something and to make possible. And so, my brothers and my sisters, obedience to the divine commands of God in the midst, especially of our affliction, requires a supernatural source of power. Mm. In short, obedience to the divine commandments of God is impossible, but is him possible. And so, saints, we might be coming up the rough side of the mountain on tonight. Mm -hmm. I don't know who I'm teaching to tonight, talking to, or who this word is for. We might feel like we're coming up the rough side of the mountain singing that old spiritual hymn. But I want you to hold on to your faith knowing that you're still coming up. Yeah. And you're coming up by the way of the rough side of the mountain. C.H. Spurgeon once said that the refiner, in other words, the refiner is God, is never very far from the mouth of the furnace when his gold is in the fire. We have to understand and realize and embrace that we are the product of God. We are the gold of God. We are this treasure, the righteousness of God in the earth realm. Mm -hmm. And we have to embrace the fact that our adversity and our affliction works for our good. Mm -hmm. And so in my conclusion tonight, my brothers and my sisters, all of us must endure adversity. Mm -hmm. There is no one of us that is immune from difficult circumstances. They can either drive us to our knees and make us rely and rely on God and call upon God, or they can harden our hearts and drive us further away from God. Do not allow this pandemic and what's going on, the social unrest, the violence in the land, all that we see. God told us this in Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 24. Do not allow this to call us, cause us to drive away further from the Lord, but let us draw closer yes. to Him. Yes, Lord. The choice is ours. Yes, Lord. If you are presently going through adversity tonight, then God may be trying to show you something, disciplining you, or he might be trying to draw you closer to him so that you can learn to rely upon his strength mm -hmm. or that you can learn to rely on what he has already spoken to you and not on your own strength or your own thought pattern. He might be even humbling you to draw you to himself so that you might rep repent and trust in Christ and be saved. Somebody needs to give their life to the Lord on tonight. But either way, adversity should make us keep our eyes on Christ. And so whoever this is for, if this word touched you on tonight, I pray that you are strengthened and resolved on a great extent in your faith, understanding that the sufferings of this present world are not worthy 
to be compared to the with the glory that is to be revealed in us. We have to know that God has a purpose for what he has allowed. And if he has allowed it, then we can rejoice in it because if he brought us to it, he's going to bring us through it. He will, yes, he will. But it's going to be harder and longer for us to come through it if we try to do it in our own strength. We have to get on our knees and talk to the Lord and ask God to help us. We all have trying times. We all have times of doubt. We all have times where we feel like we're not saved. We all have times of wondering, God, how are you going to do it? Because he speaks to us on a need-to-know basis. We just have to know that God, as we said on Sunday, remembers his children. We have a covenant with God that he yes, will Lord. not break. God promised us something. Oh, what did God. God promise you? What has God revealed to you about your future? Yes, Lord. Well, understand that your present circumstance, don't make final uh, uh, de de determinations based on the pr uh, present circumstance because it's not your final destination. Mm -hmm. Hold on to God. Get the instruction that God gives you out of the volume of the book. What he says about you in his word and understand that even in this present suffering that God is still going to take you to the promised land. Yes, yes, yes. So God bless you all tonight. We pray that this word was a blessing to you. I pray that you will strengthen someone else and let them know that what they're going through, and we all know who they are, that there is an objective to what they're going through. And they will still yet make it out unscathed on the other side if they will yet hold on to the hand and to the plan of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you tonight. We bless you. We give you glory and great praise. Lord God, we're so grateful on tonight that you are the one that keeps us in the hollow of your hand and under the shelter of your wings, and you hold us with your free spirit. We know, Lord God, that your plan cannot be thwarted. We know that no devil in hell or on this earth, no suffering, no affliction, no adversity can stop what you have predestined for our lives because you already told us that your counsel shall stand and you will do all your good pleasure. Help us, Lord God, to see what we're going through, Lord God, in a different light, in a spiritual perspective, and still yet give you praise and be able to say that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death yeah. God we will fear no evil for you are with us, Lord. with us Lord and we're grateful tonight Thank that you. you will never leave us nor forsake us Thank you, Jesus. and so God we give you great praise and we give you honor tonight and it's in the matchless and immutable name of Jesus that we pray can somebody shout amen on tonight amen, amen. God bless you on tonight we want to to know that if you have a desire to sow into this ministry our cash app is dollar sign five 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 all caps a d f m once again that's dollar sign cash app five 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 cap capital a capital d capital f capital n if you want to give by way of zell you can give at hours of deliverance at yahoo.com but more importantly as we always say we want you to continue to come so you can find strength for your journey it's a simple but yet complex uh lesson on tonight but it's applicable to all of us because all of us have to deal with times of adversity. And if we will embrace what God has said about his purpose and the objective that His plan, the plan of suffering is going to bring us, mm -hmm. we will be a better people. Yes. And so be encouraged on tonight and know that God has an objective to your affliction. And always remember that I am because right. he is. Can somebody say that with me? I am. I, I am. am. Because he is. Because he is. In Jesus' name. God In bless Jesus you on tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen.